Well, you guys certainly seem to like that video, especially the last section, Pentomino Pathfinding. Because since posting that video, I have gotten tons of people commenting, messaging me, and working together on Discord on all sorts of different Pentomino Pathfinding puzzles. As a result, I have decided to make two sequel videos about Pentomino Pathfinding. This is part one, where the puzzle remains firmly in the 2D plane. I will cover updated square board solutions, since most of the larger ones in the last video have been improved, super large square boards, rectangular boards, and hexomino pathfinding on square boards. Admittedly, I do find that this video is probably the least interesting of the three, but oh well. In part two, I will take pentominos out of the 2D plane and into the 3D, pushing the limits of this puzzle as things start to kind of break. If you were watching this video without watching the first Pentomino Facts video, well, you'll still be able to understand what is going on, but the context from that video will probably be helpful, so I recommend checking it out first. Also, if you want to try out any of these puzzles yourself, Kaifax has created a Pentomino Pathfinding website that allows you to move the Pentominos around yourself and automatically calculates the best path. It has a bunch of different features such as changing the board size, being able to take screenshots, and also a Taurus mode. Check that out if you're interested. Anyways, let's get started. Well, before we actually get to the new stuff, let me explain what this puzzle is again for any new watchers. In this puzzle, you will get an empty grid where you have to place pentominos on that grid in order to create the longest path of white cells possible. The path will always take the route that goes through the least number of cells. You get to decide the placement of the starting and ending cells. For instance, in this example, the shortest path between these two cells is this. The path will not weave around here because that is not the shortest path. In the last video, I worked my way up from 1x1 all the way to 14x14. 14 14. However, since then, every single board size above 9x9, including 9x9, has since had improvements, most of which have been improved by Lee's. The elusive 48 cell 9x9 path that I hinted about being oh so close to in the last video was found. Here is the solution. It's super elegant, making perfect use of the F pentomino to drag the final cell to be diagonally right next to the rest of its path. 10x10, 11x11, and 12x12 were also all improved by Lee's. 10x10's improvement was also by 1, and it does the exact same thing as the 9x9 by having the last cell diagonally touch the rest of the path. 11x11 was also improved by 1, using every single pentomino except for the U and X. The 12x12 was actually improved by 2, from a 77 to a 79, using every single pentomino perfectly so that there is no wiggle room anywhere. Out of everything in this video, I honestly find this to be one of the most impressive solutions. It feels very grid-like for which cells contain pentominoes, and every single one of the pentominoes feels actively useful in some way. I mean, just look at how the path weaves perfectly around that T-pentomino. So elegant. The 14x14 was also improved, although much less improved, and more so, we found out people actually did this puzzle before in a large-scale puzzle festival, and they were significantly better than us. As a result, the optimal path jumped from an 88 to a staggering 92 with this solution. Last time, the X pentomino was the only one that was absolutely useless and prevented the solution from being 89 or above. This time, it is actually one of the most useful as the path weaves perfectly around it. For a while, all of the boards from 9x9 to 14x14 had improved except for the 13x13, and there was a big struggle to find an improvement on the 13x13, but eventually parts of the optimal 14x14 path from the Puzzle Festival were taken, and that was slowly built upon, eventually improving it from being an 84 all the way to an 88. Boards of larger sizes were tried too. The 15x15 currently has a path of 96, and the 16x16 has a path of 99. At board sizes of this level, the strategy generally is to create as long of a spiral as possible. However, the larger the board size gets, the more the strategy becomes, well, weird. At board sizes above 30x30, 30 30, there just become massive swaths of space everywhere, and the placement of the pentominos gets very sparse. Once you get to board sizes of 42 by 42, the optimal solution is literally just placing all of the pentominos in a line to prioritize stretching them vertically as much as possible, while still extending outwards horizontally when possible as well. Placing the starting point in one corner of that group of pentominos and then placing the ending point in the same row in the far corner gives a path of 147. Every subsequent board size up adds one to that, making the optimal solution always n plus 106. N is this side length, which increases by 1 every single board size up, and the 106 is the rest of the cells in this path, which always remain the same. You'd think that would forever be the optimal solution, but no, it's not. It's only until 56 by 56 where we get this thing found by Lee's. At 56 by 56, this new strategy and the previous strategy yield the exact same number of cells at 161. But for 57 by 57 and above, this new strategy reigns supreme, giving us a size of 2n plus 49 from here on out. This is 1n, this is 2n, and this is, well, 
50 cells, but both of the ends share exactly one cell at the corner. So, subtracting one from the other cells gives us 49. This is the maximum of what has been found so far. No different strategies above 57 by 57 have been found that improves the path, although it's very possible that there is something better out there. All of this was done manually because, well, there are so many possibilities for where to place all of the pentominoes on the board that it becomes straight up impossible to have a computer try to find every single one. Next up, we have rectangular boards. Starting with side length 3, this gets quite a bit easier than regular square boards as half of the pentominoes have to fit in the 3x3 space and thus, placing them anywhere on a side length 3 board either blocks off the two halves of the puzzle, or blocks off a column which does not improve the path whatsoever. As a result, the only useful pentominoes here are the I, L, N, P, U, and Y pentominoes. Well, actually there's two optimal solutions that happen to involve the T, being the 3x4 alone, and the 3x9 with the I, but apart from those two instances, the F, T, V, W, X, and Z pentominoes are not useful whatsoever. As already stated, the 3x4 has this T solution, but also has two more P solutions, yielding paths of 7. The 3x5 has three solutions as well, with the L, N, and P pentominoes giving us paths of 10. The 3x6 also has three solutions, with the L, Y, and I pentominoes giving us paths of 13. You'd think the number of solutions per board would keep going up with each size, as there become more and more ways to place the pentominoes, but as we saw with the 5x5 and 6x6 on square boards, that is not the case, and once again it's not the case here, as both the 3x7 and 3x8 have exactly one solution, which is only using the L pentomino, creating paths of 14 and 15 respectively. The 3x9 is where it starts getting more complicated, as you now need two pentominoes. A strategy emerges here, as most of the solutions involve filling in the 7 center cells of the board and then having the other 3 filled in cells on the wall connected to each other, giving you this sort of snaking pattern around the board. Snake 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 Oh yeah, and there's also these two solutions where the pentominoes are not connected I guess. The 3x10 has the exact same strategy except with only 2 cells on the edges, but this time not every combination with the 8 center cells filled works, as this one gives you 2 of the same pentomino being the L pentomino. No more snaking, so sad. The 3x11 has 4 solutions, which are really just 2 solutions but with the L and Y pentominoes reflected in each of them. Remember how the 3x7 and 3x8 only had 1 solution with the L pentomino? Well, 3x12 and 3x13 both do the exact same thing but adding the I pentomino onto the end of the L pentomino. As the side length increases more and more, the strategies tend to all become pretty much the same placing the L and I piece like they were in the 3x12 and 3x13 boards on the end, and then placing the N piece on the other end. By the time we get to 3x19, you can place 4 pentominoes, so flip the N and add the P, and from 3x18 to 3x22 it's basically this as the same optimal solution, whatever the side length is plus 18. At 3x23, flip the N and P pentominoes again, then add the U pentomino, and the solution from that until 3x27 is just side length plus 20. Finally, at 3x28 and above, Flip the P, U, and N pentominoes once again, and add the final pentomino, the Y pentomino, and the final solution, extending infinitely upwards, is just side length plus 22. Continuing on to side length 4, starting with the 4x5 which has a total of 14 different solutions, all with one pentomino. There are 3 different paths taken, and each path has exactly 5 combinations of shapes. Except for one which only has 4. So close to being perfectly equal. Oh well. 4x6 has a grand total of 20 different solutions, which, despite having a smaller number of cells compared to the 5x5, has 4 more solutions than it. Another difference between 4x6 and 5x5 is that there are a lot of different paths for the board to go, 12 in total, compared to the 5x5 6. There's also one configuration here that only has one pentomino, being the I pentomino, and the other 19 have two pentominoes. Here are all 20 of them, and here are all of them separated into their different paths. Just like the 5x5 board, the P pentomino is in the most configurations at a total of 13, over half of them. However, this time the L is the second most used pentomino, being in a total of 8 configurations, while the V was second most in 5x5. Meanwhile, X and Y are the only pentominoes to not be in any configurations compared to the W and I last time. Once again, here's a graph of every single configuration. Moving on to the 4x7, 6 total configurations were found, resulting in a path of 18. This time, every single path is different. Only half of the pentominoes are in any of these 6 configurations. This time, L and V are in the most configurations at 3, P and Z both have 2 configurations, and U and W both only have 1. The remaining 6 pentominoes are useless. 4x8 and above is where we stop finding every single solution, as there ends up becoming too much to manually find. Remember, we're doing all this by hand. The 4x8 has a maximum solution of 20 with 2 unused cells. 
The 4x9 has a maximum solution of 22 with 4 unused cells, and then the 4x10 finally starts us off with 3 pentominoes, creating a maximum path of 25 cells. Every other rectangle size above this, and all other rectangle sizes of side length 5, 6, and above also get less interesting, due to the fact that they are not squares and they can't be perfectly proven, so I'm not going to talk about all of them here. However, if you want to see what everyone has come up with, a communal spreadsheet has been created showing off the maximum paths found for many board sizes and many other stuff. Link in the description if you want to check that out. The last rectangular board size I want to talk about though is the 5x6 because it takes that really cool 5x5 solution I mentioned in the last video and extends the spiral into one side. In fact, on the 6x7 you can extend it even more by placing the eye pentomino. Okay, moving on. And now on to hexomino pathfinding. Yep, we went there. While there's only 12 pentominoes, there's a total of 35 hexominoes, which means there's many more possibilities for each board. Once you get to 13x13 on pentomino boards, the maximum length stops increasing by so much each time and eventually stagnates at a point, while on the hexomino boards it only continues to go up and up. As a result, and because they don't have official names, I'm only going to talk about them up to 14x14, although larger sizes have been attempted, and once again you can check those out on the spreadsheet. 4x4 is where we start, in which 3 different hexominoes lead to solutions of 10. Then, 5x5 is actually really similar to 5x5 pentominoes, as the paths are exactly identical, but there's only one hexomino needed, with 4 empty cells now. There are 20 different solutions, with a handful of different pairs of the same pentomino. 6x6 goes up to 23, from the pentominoes 22, and 7x7 with this absolutely perfect spiral solution goes up to 31. Then, back at the 8x8, the optimal hexomino solution ends up tying the optimal pentomino solution being a 39, although much less satisfying than that one now that there's one empty cell. It really feels like that empty cell could be used to push it up to a path of 40, but no one has been able to do so. 9x9 hexominoes also ends up with the same maximum solution as 9x9 pentominoes at 48, which is a bit more expected, as 5 hexominoes and 6 pentominoes take up exactly the same number of cells at 30. The 10x10 hexomino path improves the pentomino 10x10x1, as it goes back to having every single cell either contain a hexomino or be a part of the path. From here on out, the hexomino solutions will always be better than the pentomino solutions. Continuing on, the 11x11 hexomino solution is now a 70 compared to the pentomino 67, with only 3 unused cells. Now up to the 12x12, just like the pentomino 12x12, this is definitely one of my favorites. This T-adjacent and X-adjacent pentominoes are so brilliantly placed leading to a path of 82. Just like 12x12 pentominoes, this one also has a sort of grid maze-like property to it. 13x13 goes up to a 95, and 14x14 14 goes up to 106, both of which have only a very select few cells not a part of the path, and both of which are extremely elegant. There's a lot more interesting pathfinding solutions that people have come up with, several of which are flashing on screen right now as I'm speaking, but I decided to not talk about every single one specifically because, well, this video would just be me talking endlessly about, here's this solution, and here's that one, and there's this one, which, I don't think that would be a very interesting video, but if you want to check them out yourselves, feel free to visit the communal spreadsheet. Link in the description. I also want to shout out this sheet made by Rain Kitty, which shows every single maximum solution for square boards for every single type of polyomino. As you can see, all polyomino types eventually hit a point where laying every single one out vertically like we saw with the 42x42 42 42 on pentomino boards becomes the only strategy for a while, aka n plus k, while eventually afterwards a different strategy emerges like the 57x57 57 57, which makes the solution 2n plus k, although no one has attempted to find out where those strategies start with hexominoes and above. I think that there's still a lot more to be found when it comes to these boards. In particular, pentomino pathfinding on certain rectangular boards can probably have every single possible solution found, but have not yet had someone dare to attempt it. In particular, 4x9 and 5x6 both feel difficult, but they both certainly feel like they're small enough for someone to find every single possible solution. Additionally, so many larger board sizes have yet to be attempted as well. Also, no one has tried hexomino pathfinding on rectangular boards yet. There's still so much out there waiting to be discovered. Anyways, that is all for this video, and stay tuned for part 2, or I guess part 3, where we take pentominoes into 3D space. See ya!